Hey everybody, the Nine Five community is pulling together a 1.16 release right now, and it is absolutely packed with new features. From UI tweaks to performance improvements, to new processors, and a simple and powerful new retry mechanism, to changing the way we think about nodes in the cluster. This release is sure to provide you far more productivity and make sure that you have more fun along the way. Version 1.16 of 9.5 provides several fairly minor but helpful improvements to the UI. One of those is the uh, white space indicator that we see for properties now. So for example, if we take a look at this replace text processor, a common problem that we run into is that users will often copy and paste values from elsewhere, which is fine, but it often leads to introducing white space at the beginning or the end. And so if we were to configure this processor with a space here at the end, we'd be searching for the value John Doe space. This can lead to several different issues. For one, it might not actually replace the words John Doe because the text may not have a space following it. Or if it does replace it, it might inadvertently remove that space from the text when we didn't want it to. Unfortunately, NiFi can't really just remove spaces from the front and the rear because it doesn't know whether they're needed or not. But what we could do is make it a little more obvious that there is some white space there. So now whenever we apply changes, we can see this new icon pops up here. And that's just going to tell us that there's white space at the beginning or the end. And that may be okay or it may not be. It's up to the user to figure out whether that's intentional or not but at least we have some indicator to now make it a little more obvious. So if we remove that trailing white space and hit apply, we can see that icon goes away. Another nice improvement in 1.16 was this config verification that was actually introduced in 1.15, but in 1.16, several processors and controller services were updated to take advantage of this new capability. So pretty much all of the AWS and Google compute related processors. A lot of the Azure processors were all updated to ensure that they're able to connect to the desired uh, service. The JMS related components and the DBCP connection pools were updated to make sure that we can load the drivers appropriately and connect to the database. And all of the list processors, so list file, list FTP and SFTP, all of those were also updated so that it, they display information about how many files were listed and how many of those actually match our filter. So if we have filters that are selecting only some of the files, it makes it a lot easier to ensure that the filter is matching what we expect. So if you take a look at our data flow here, we've got a pretty simple, straightforward data flow where we grabbing some transaction data from Kafka, we're doing some enrichment, uh, we're doing some textual replacement, and then we're merging these records together into larger chunks so that we can push them into HDFS. Now, if you're using many HDFS related processors, and by many here, I mean hundreds of HDFS processors or more, not five or six, you're probably all too familiar with the fact that the startup times for NiFi can be pretty painful. In fact, I worked with one user who had over a thousand HDFS processors in his flow recently. And the startup time for NiFi was about two hours just to load all of the necessary Hadoop related classes. So in version 1.16, we changed how things work under the covers for these HDFS related processors. And now instead of that flow taking over two hours to load, the entire data flow starts up and begins running in two to three minutes with 1.16. So very noteworthy if you're using a lot of HDFS related processors. And we've also introduced a couple of new processors for enriching data. Now lookup record works great for a lot of use cases, but sometimes it's just not enough, especially if you need to use web services in order to get your enrichment data. Now a common use case is that we have data streaming in and then we need to take our data that we have, transform that data into some sort of JSON-based request that we can send to some web service in order to gather enrichment data. 
At that point, once we've gathered our enrichment data, we have to take that and merge it back into our original data. So we need to make sure that we don't lose our original data as we're transforming it into what the uh, web service needs. This can get really complicated, but now it's a piece of cake. Thanks to the new fork enrichment and join enrichment processors. This set of processors allows us to easily create a clone of our data and send one version of it to this original relationship and another version of it to this enrichment relationship. And so now we can take the data that we have, transform it in some way. So in this case, I'm using query record in order to extract the account ID fields from all of my records into a single array. And then I can post that to my HTTP base endpoint. So for example, if we look at the data that's coming in, we'll see that we have a bunch of information that has account IDs some transaction IDs, vendors, some amounts and a transaction time. So what I want to do is gather up all of these account IDs into a single array that I can then post to my web service. So if we let one flow file through, we can see that we do just that. And now we can easily post this data to our web service and get back the enrichment that we're looking for. And so now this join enrichment processor allows us to take our original data and then marry that up with our enrichment data. And the processor gives us several different ways to join that data together, including the ability to use SQL join statements. Now this is a huge improvement in usability. And to be honest, it's worth a video just to discuss how we can perform data enrichment in NiFi. So I'll probably be working on that video soon. Be sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss that. In the meantime, if you want to take it for a spin, the docs are pretty verbose here. So if we view usage on our join enrichment processor, and we choose additional details, it outlines uh, the typical type of data flow that we'll build with this processor and discusses all the different options that we have for joining the data together and how to do more complex operations. One of the biggest improvements that we've made in 1.16 revolves around this little connection here. If we fail to push any data to HDFS, the data gets routed to this failure relationship and it will just sit in this connection retrying forever. Now this was the intended pattern whenever NiFi was open source, but you've told us that that wasn't enough. You want to retry five times or 10 times. And if you're still failing, you want to do something else with it, like push the data to S3 or send a notification, or both. So in version 1.16, we've made retrying stupid simple, just as it should be. So if we stop this processor, we can now delete our failure connection here. And if we configure the processor, remember before 1.16, in the settings tab, we had all of the connections listed here with the ability to auto-terminate them. Those are now gone, and they've instead moved to this new relationships tab. So if we come over here, we can choose to terminate success as we're already doing, but instead of just terminating failure, we can choose to retry any data that gets routed to this relationship. And then we can choose how many times we wanna retry. It defaults to 10, but maybe we wanna retry 12 times. And it's going to use exponential back off each time that it fails up until some configurable amount of time. So in this case, we'll say, don't wait more than 10 minutes between retries. And by default, whenever we retry a flow file, we'll throw it back into its original queue that it came from with a penalty on it so that it goes to the bottom of the queue until its penalty expires. But there are some use cases where we don't want that. For example, whenever we're doing a CDC type of data flow where everything has to be in exactly the same order, 
In that case, we can choose to yield the processor, which means that we'll throw the data back on the connection, but we'll put it back at the top of the queue where it was to begin with, and we won't try processing any data in the meantime. But for most use cases, we'll want to use the default value of penalize. And then what do we do after we finish all of our retries? Well, we can choose to go ahead and terminate at that point. So if we've configured both terminate and retry, anything that gets routed to this failure relationship will be retried 12 times, and only then will it be terminated. Or maybe we don't want to terminate at all. Maybe instead we want to push to HDFS and retry up to 12 times. And at that point, we want to push the data to S3 instead. So we can add a put S3 object processor. We'll give it a bucket of HDFS put failure. Give it our credentials. And for this processor, we'll also terminate success. And if we fail, we'll go ahead and retry 10 times. But after 10 failures, we'll go ahead and just terminate the data. At that point, we've tried the best that we could. And we'll connect put HDFS as failure connection to S3. So now anything that fails to be pushed to HDFS will be put back onto its original connection for 12 attempts. Only after the data has failed 12 times does it actually get transferred to this failure relationship. It doesn't get much simpler than this. All right, we've already seen a lot of great improvements in the 1.16 release, but the biggest improvements revolve around the clustering model. Now, firstly, we've improved performance to eliminate some of the UI sluggishness and the node disconnects that you may have run into. But if a node gets disconnected, it's no longer such a big deal on 1.16. And that's because prior to 1.16, if a node were to become disconnected from the cluster, there was no way to really reconcile the differences between the disconnected node's data flow and the cluster's data flow. And as a result, we locked you out of making any changes to the cluster to ensure that whenever the node does rejoin, that the data flow is consistent across all nodes. But in 1.16, we provided an all new mechanism for reconciling those differences. And as a result, that node that was disconnected can now reconnect very easily. And to top it off, we decided that because of that, it doesn't really make sense to lock you out of making flow changes just because one node in your cluster is disconnected. And here's what that looks like. So I'm running a three node cluster here, but let's say that for whatever reason, one of the nodes in my cluster becomes disconnected. Now, prior to 1.16, any change that we tried to make to the flow would get rejected because I have a disconnected node. Only two out of three nodes are connected. But in 1.16, we aren't so tied down. I can come in here and stop this processor. I can change its configuration. I can even start deleting processors. Maybe we don't want this change anymore. and we just want to auto terminate failure after 12 attempts. I can make pretty much any changes that I want, but now if I come over here to my disconnected node, we'll see that it's still running the same version of the data flow that it was whenever the node was disconnected, and that's what we expect. But now if I request that that node rejoin the cluster, There's no more telling me that the local flow doesn't match the cluster flow. The disconnected node will just inherit whatever flow the cluster tells it is the latest copy of the flow, as long as doing so wouldn't result in data loss.
This model is really just a lot simpler. And that's something that we all need in our lives. So now we've walked through all the biggest features in the 1.16 release, from tweaks to the UI to faster startup times and more powerful enrichment capabilities, from simpler configuration for retries to simpler cluster mechanisms. Version 1.16 is sure to make you far more productive in both building and running your data flows. If you want to make sure that you stay up to date, be sure that you subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.